Awesome. Okay, yeah, I see it. Yes. Hello, Christine, and welcome to our Women's History Month interview. I look forward to hearing about you and your academic and professional career today. My name is Alexa Panuccio. I'm a junior here studying computer engineering, um, and Christine here is a 2016 graduate of Villanova who also studied computer engineering, and she is now a senior cyber operations engineer for the MITRE Corporation, which is awesome stuff. So let's get right into it. Uh, what led you to choose engineering as a major? Um, so I was in high school when I decided, um, I think maybe my sophomore year, we had career day and someone's dad came in from Lockheed Martin because um, I'm from Maryland. So he came in and he started talking about something called cybersecurity. And this was before I knew what that was and before it was like such a huge buzzword in the news. So he starts explaining that his job is to protect computers and he compared the computer to a castle. And he was like, just like a castle has a moat and all these different defenses, you have to do that for the computer. And I was like, oh, this sounds like really cool. And I thought I would be good at it. Um, Cause I was like, oh, it'd be so cool to think of all the different ways to kind of build those protections around the computer. Um, so then I went home and I asked my dad and I was like, have you heard of cybersecurity? What do I have to study in college if I wanna like do that? And he was like, you probably have to learn how to program. So you should study engineering and probably computer engineering. <laughs> awesome, that's so cool actually that uh, Lockheed Martin was like a big factor for you in making that decision because that's actually a company that I'm interning for right now and that I really wanna work for. Yeah. So that's super exciting. Um, I'm going more of a software engineering route than cybersecurity, but I also see a lot of the benefit in coding and the major that we have. So that is awesome. Yeah, so a great company, that's awesome. Yes, yes, I'm very excited about it. Um, but I guess then, you know, you went down your engineering path and now what is your current job today? So now I'm a senior cyber operations engineer uh, at the MITRE Corporation. Um, so I do a lot of software development, um, but I'm primarily a reverse engineer. Ooh, okay, that sounds fun. Um, so have you had any other positions before this one? I know the title senior senior engineer sounds pretty fancy. So I'm assuming you had some positions before this one. Yeah, um, so this actually is my first job. Um, I used to work at MIT Lincoln Laboratory. Uh, that was my first job out of college um, in Boston. So I was there, I think a little bit over two years. Um, and that's where I first learned reverse engineering. Um, through my job, but then also we had a capture the flag team, um, which is like hacking competitions. Uh, so I learned a lot from my friends slash coworkers there. Um, so yeah, but Boston was pretty cold. So <laughs> I wanted to move back to the DMV area um, and I ended up taking a job at MITRE and I've been at MITRE for almost three years now. That's awesome. Oh, that sounds really fun. Cool. So back at MITRE now, what would you say is the most rewarding part of your job? Um, I would say getting to work on problems and try to solve problems that maybe no one's ever thought of before or that no one's ever solved before. It's definitely really rewarding to kind of work on a problem for a few weeks or even a few months. And then once you figure it out, you're like, oh, I've got it. And I don't know, it's kind of like anytime you figure something out that you've been thinking about for a really long time, um, like just getting that feeling over and over again once you've accomplished something is really, really rewarding. I agree. I agree 100%, especially in a field like computer science and computer engineering and stuff like that, coding something where it's like failing at first and then you need to keep trying and keep working at it and just the satisfaction from getting it right is incredible and finally figuring it out. It's amazing. So that's awesome. Um, but I guess uh, kind of going along those lines, um, 
you kind of need, I feel like other people to kind of motivate you in a field like this. So what or who has helped you advance in your career? I would say my mentors and my friends. I've been really lucky that throughout my career, even when I was at Villanova, I had really, really great mentors. There are so many professors that were just always like going above and beyond to try to teach you things and to help you. Um, especially I was always at office hours mm -hmm. <laughs> whenever I was confused. Um, and then at work, it's kind of the same thing. Like there's just been so many people who they try to guide you um, towards either the solution or um, they try to guide you in like the right direction, um, especially like if you're working on a really hard problem, there's always somebody that you can ask who knows more than you. So that's definitely, I feel like helped me grow a lot in my career because I know so much more now <laughs> than I knew when I graduated. That's good. Yeah. It's definitely important to have a support system of a bunch of people um, going into a field like this because you do face a lot of challenges. Um, so what challenges have you faced in your career and like how did you overcome them? Um, so I'm a pretty big perfectionist. <laughs> um, so I remember when I first started working, uh, you kind of think that you have to know everything and it can be really overwhelming because your whole like first month on the job, you're just learning about all of these words that you don't know and all of these things that you don't know. And I remember thinking, oh, I need to learn about all of these different things and become an expert in all of these different things. And it wasn't until one of my friends um, slash mentors told me like, Christine, you don't have to be good at everything. That's why you work with other people. <laughs> because other people are good at those things. So um, I think that was kind of transformative for me because I realized that I can focus on the small part that I'm good at and everybody else focuses on their part. And then you actually learn a lot, but then your product is so much better when you have contributions from everybody on the team. Um, so yeah, I think I get having good mentors has really, really helped me a lot in my career because they remember, they're like, oh, I've been you. Let me tell you how to get through that situation. Cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. At least in my college career thus far, perfectionism is like a thing that has been one of my like obstacles almost. Like I have to know every single thing. And I remember being thrown onto a team as an intern that's working on this big software project. And it's just like, wow, I don't know how any of this works. <laughs> like, what do I do here? But um, I agree, it's, yeah, it's just about kind of getting in there and figuring out on the job. And um, it's, it's a challenge, but it's a fun challenge, so. Yeah, awesome. you don't have to, you don't have to know everything is what I've realized. Like you can easily contribute if you just jump in. And that's when I started, you know, playing capture the flag. I was like, oh, I need to learn all of assembly. And then I need <laughs> to learn everything about like web sockets and just like all of everything. And my friend was like, just pick one problem and work on it. And he was like, if you don't know something, that's fine. Just and that was like the best advice, just jumping in. Mm -hmm. Awesome, yes. So speaking further of challenges and it being uh, Women's History Month, of course, did you think that being a woman in engineering ever presented any challenges for you? I think it definitely does. Um, whether you're a woman or a person of color, um, you already kind of go into an experience where there's maybe nobody in the room that looks like you and you feel a little bit insecure and you kind of feel like you have to prove yourself. Um, and I think all women definitely feel that. Um, and even, so I studied abroad in South Korea and I took a circuits class where I was the only female student and the only foreigner. And the professor on the first day asked me if I was lost. <laughs> <laughs> so um there's sometimes situations like that um 
where people might not even assume you're an engineer. They might think that you are uh, one of the admins um, that answers the phone in the office and you're like, oh, sorry, that's not my desk. <laughs> so um, I think having supportive people around you is something that really like is important to have. Like you searching for a job, you should look for companies that are good for women and that like they'll say like best companies for women to work for because if you work with other women, you guys can lift each other up and talk about these things and then having good male allies who recognize that and they're like oh yeah like that shouldn't be that way um and that's that's honestly one reason why I picked MITRE to work for um because I knew someone that worked there and she was like this is a great place for women to work I think you'll really really enjoy it um so yeah honestly I can recommend MITRE to like any woman who wants to get a job in engineering, I think that um, it's a really, really great place and you are supported. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So that I guess was a really good insight into your career. Um, and to kind of finish off here and wrap it back up to our little home Villanova, um, what is your most meaningful memory from your time here at Villanova? Um, oh, I had to think um, a lot about this question because I feel like there's like so many different things that really mattered to me when I was there. Um, I was part of a bunch of clubs. Um, I really liked a lot of my teachers. Um, so it was really hard to pick like just one thing. Um, and I would say when I was in the faith and reason learning community um, with sister Beth Hassel, um, getting to learn from her just kind of like changed the way I thought about a lot of things. Um, but something that she said was, it's not about knowing all of the answers, it's about becoming comfortable with the questions. And that has really stuck with me, um, I think through my faith life because uh, sometimes it can be challenging um, to hold your faith, especially, you know, we just had the COVID pandemic that is still ongoing. Um, and, you know, you go through stressful experiences and yeah, that's just something, her saying that, like I can just picture her saying that. Um, and that was just really impactful, I think, um, to kind of my whole outlook that's amazing. And it's crazy because I actually was also in the faith and learning, uh, the faith and reason learning community. Oh, wow. And I also had Beth. Um, so shout out Beth. She's incredible. We love her and gives great advice. Um, but yeah, that is everything I had for you today. Um, I don't know if you have any closing remarks or anything like that. Any advice uh, for a female computer engineers out there? You've given a lot already, but um I would say just stick with it um even if you're the only woman in the room uh eventually more will come sometimes you have to be the first one which can be scary um but yeah it's don't be don't be afraid I know it's it's hard to tell somebody not to be afraid um fake it till you make it that's actually one of my, my one of my friends said that he was like fake it till you make it when it comes to confidence so mm -hmm. um if you're the only woman in the room and you're really nervous and you're really scared just pretend that you're confident and you eventually will be I agree I I live by that motto as well so fake it till you make it I like it um yeah. But all right, that should wrap us up here. Thank you so much for joining us, Christine. This was a great interview. Um, and I look forward to seeing you soon, hopefully. Yeah, actually I did want to mention, um, so having a community like you have at Villanova is really important. Um, and building that community of women in cybersecurity has been something that's been important to me. Um, so, I actually am starting a podcast um, with some women, um, both at MITRE and at the University of Virginia, 
um, and it's called Her Hacks Podcast um, coming out soon. So it's going to have a lot of advice on just being a woman in cybersecurity and how to navigate your career, but then also giving advice on different technical topics um, and things to help kind of give you an edge. Um, so yeah, check it out. Awesome. Okay. Her I love it. Her love hacks. Podcast. Her hacks. Everyone <laughs> check it out. Uh, Her hacks podcast.com. <laughs> there we go. That sounds great. I'm, I'm giving it a listen. I can't okay. wait. Her H A X. <laughs> okay. H A X. Her hacks. Got it. Okay. So that should wrap us up finally for now. Um, thanks again. Yeah, and no that's about it. <laughs>